So I have this Python file in my Windows system and I also have Python installed in my Windows. Now if I execute this Python file with my Python 3, nothing happens apparently, but if we check our Discord server, we can see that we've got a screenshot. Now if we wait for some more time, we've got another screenshot of our system. This will keep doing this until I close the terminal or manually stop this. But if I have an executable file for this Python code, which one can easily make using PyInstaller, it'll run in the background and keep sending the screenshots to the Discord server using webhooks until we restart our computer. In this video, we're going to read and understand these Python codes just for the purpose of learning Python in a fun way. So if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and like this video for more cybersecurity and ethical hacking content. Now if I open my Python codes in my Sublime Text Editor, you can see the codes. Now I am going to read these codes line by line and tell you how it is working. So in the first five lines, we import some modules. Now if you don't know about modules, these are simply like toolboxes. We use these modules to save our time. In this way we don't have to write whole codes, but we can use these modules or toolboxes to make our code shorter and easier. Like if our code has something to do with time, then we can use the time module instead of writing our own codes. Simply, if we have to do something with internet or web requests, we can use the requests module in Python. There are built-in modules in Python, but we can also create our own modules when we have bigger codes. In this simple example, we import the time module, which is used for working with time and delays, and this OS module lets Python interact with our computer's operating system. We can create files, delete them, and do many other stuff. Next up, we have this requests module. This is another very popular external module which we install using pip, and it is used for making web requests to websites and APIs. Here we're using this to send our screenshot to the Discord server via webhook. Also, we have this datetime module, and from this datetime module, we only want to import datetime class, we don't want to import the whole datetime module. That's why we've specified it like this. It tells Python that we only want to import the datetime class from the datetime module. Similarly, we're importing image grab from PIL or Python Imaging Library for taking the screenshot. After specifying the required modules, we create this variable where we specify our webhook for the Discord server. If you don't know how to get a webhook, I'll tell you in the end of the video. Next up, we create functions. Functions are like a tiny piece of code which makes our work easier to do. By using functions, we split our code into parts which make it more readable, easier to debug, and we also don't need to repeat codes every time. Like for example, we're first creating this screenshot function, we first use this def keyword to specify that we're defining a function, and then the function name, you can name it whatever you want, and then these braces if we have any parameters to specify. Parameters are like inputs to our functions, in our screenshot function, we create this new local variable where we store our datetime using this datetime class we imported from the datetime module. Now if you carefully look here, this part of datetime class gets the current date and time for our system. And then in this part, we convert it to the string format according to this specified pattern. If we look at our pattern, we can see it'll first show us the year, then month, then day, and so on. You can remove whatever you want from here or customize it however you want. We've created this variable for naming our screenshot file. If a file is stored with the current time, it'll never overwrite the previous file. Next up, we create a file name variable where we're creating a name for our screenshot using f strings and this timestamp variable we created before. So our screenshot file name will start with double s and then it'll have the timestamp and it'll be a png file. One more thing is that if you don't want to use this time formatting function here, you can just copy it from here and paste it right after this timestamp variable in this line. It'll still work exactly the same. Next up, we create this screenshot variable for taking the screenshot using image grabs grab function, and then we use the save function to save this screenshot with this file name and as a PNG file, and then in the last line of this function, we use the return keyword to return the file name as we're going to use it in the next function. Now if I comment out the whole other code and call this function only, and now save the file and execute the code, you can see we have a new PNG file here, which has a name that looks exactly like what we specified there, and if I open it via Explorer, you can see it is the screenshot. We've successfully grabbed the screenshot. Now in the next function, we're grabbing the public IP of that network. Well, this function is completely optional and you can skip it if you don't like it. 
But in this function, we use the request module to do a get request at this web address to get our public IP address and return it as text. I just wanted to receive it along with the screenshot, that's why I wrote this, but if you don't want, you can completely skip it. Next on, we've our Discord function, which is taking this image path parameter. Well, it is going to be coming from our screenshot function, and we'll specify it in a moment. But before that, let's read the further code in this function. We start with try and accept statement, which is used for error handling. Now, what will happen here is that Python will execute all this code, and if it expects any error, I'll just pass it. You can specify an error message using print, but I've just used pass to pass it. In the next line, we're opening that screenshot as raw bytes, and then we're preparing our file to be uploaded. We create this dictionary because the request module allows us to send files this way. And in this files dictionary, we create this file field, and the value has three items. The first one is the name, then the second one is the actual content of the screenshot, and then the third one is the mime type of the screenshot, which is PNG. Next up, we create another dictionary named payload, which has the key named content, and the value for this key is in this F string. We start with screenshot, and then we use the OS module to get the username of the user who is currently logged in. And then I've intentionally redacted the IP address, but for using that, just use that get IP function here. And then after that, again, that datetime module for datetime. These are the details that will go with our screenshot to the Discord webhook. Next up, we create this response variable, and in here, we use the request module to send the data and files to the webhook. Once finished, we use this remove function from the OS module to remove that image. Lastly, we've our main function. In our main function, we use a while loop, which is going to run for infinite time as we've not specified any condition here. And then again, here we use try, accept statements. We create a new variable, which will store the output of our screenshot function, and we'll use this variable in the discord function. In the last line of this function, we specify sleep time. I've set 30 seconds there, but we can also specify a minute or more. Now if we save this and run this, it'll send screenshots to this Discord server every 30 seconds as you can see. This was just for learning Python, I don't think it has any real world use case. Also, we can easily create an executable file for this code using pyinstaller. We can install pyinstaller using pip, and then using this command we'll get an executable file which when double clicked starts running in the background. For getting a webhook, you need to create a new server in Discord, and then go to settings of any text channel. From there, you can go to integration and create a new webhook, and copy the URL of that webhook, but make sure to delete the webhook after use, and don't share it with anyone because it can be used to disrupt your Discord server. If you learned anything about Python, or maybe this video helped you learn something new, make sure to subscribe to this channel, and like this video, because you get content about ethical hacking and cybersecurity here. Also, if you want to support the channel along with getting something useful in return, you can check out the first link in the description. You'll get access to free guides and resources, along with access to scripts and a private Discord server where we talk about ethical hacking and security all the time. Thank you for watching. Until we meet next time, happy hacking.